Hey, I'm Tim and I'm an engineer at Streamlit and this video is a quick introduction to creating Streamlit custom components. So we're going to be going over uh, project setup, configuring your development environment and working with the component template project. And we're also going to be touching briefly on how the component system is implemented under the hood in Streamlit. So to get the most out of this video, you should be familiar with Streamlit, obviously, and you should have some passing familiarity with JavaScript or TypeScript, but you don't need to be a front-end expert by any means. To get started, I am going to copy the contents of the template directory out of the component template repo into my new project folder. And then in a terminal, I'm going to create a new virtual environment. I prefer pipenv, but you can use whatever virtual environment creator you prefer. And pipenv shell so that I'm in a shell. And then I'm going to pip install Streamlit because in order to create a component for Streamlit, you need Streamlit installed. Okay, so Streamlit is installed in our virtual environment. And the first thing I do when installing Streamlit anew is just run Streamlit hello from the terminal, and make sure that everything is running correctly, and it is. Okay, next, I am going to open this project in my Python IDE. I like PyCharm, but you can use whatever you choose. And I'm gonna pop open PyCharm's built-in terminal. Now, I am going to open the front-end code in WebStorm. So I might be the only Streamlit engineer who does this, but I really like using two different code editors uh, when I'm doing Streamlit work, one for front-end code and one for Python code. So um, in WebStorm, I'm going to open the my component front-end directory. I'm gonna ignore these annoying pop-ups, and then I'm going to open another terminal. So, so just to be clear what's going on here, this light-colored background, editor. This is for all of my front end code. And then this dark colored background editor, this is for the Python code. So first I'm going to run npm install in the front end. And this installs the initial packages that this component template requires to get built. The next thing to do is run npm start. And this starts serving the components front end from a development server. NPM start has um, has finished. It started this this dev server, and the dev server is running on localhost three thousand one. So back in Python land, I am going to run pip and shell again to make sure that I'm in the correct virtual environment, and then I'm going to run streamlet run my component init.py, and this is going to run the template example. Okay, this the the custom component here is this hello world text with this click me button. Um, and we're showing two instances of it here. Uh, when I click the click me button, it increments a counter on the front end and the front end sends data back to uh, Python land saying this is how many times I have been clicked on. So on the front end, the component itself is implemented in mycomponent.tsx. And one of the nice things about running the front end code in this uh, development server is that we can edit the front end code live. So I'm gonna change hello to ahoy, hit save. You can see it gets recompiled down here. Uh, we can edit it live and it's immediately reflected back in our running app. So now let's jump into the code that builds the component. Okay, so um, over in Python land, I am going to open the init.py file inside the my component directory. Oops, and I'm gonna pull up my terminal again. I'm just gonna run streamlit run my component init.py so that our server is running. So uh, this init.py uh, file, this is where the component is declared and it's also where we have some example code that shows how it's used. And um, to explore this, I'm actually going to just delete everything and uh, and then rewrite it from scratch. Okay, by convention to start with, we uh, import the components package from Streamlit uh, by typing import streamlit.components.v1 as components. So there's, uh, there's one very important function inside the components package, and that is this declare component function. Okay, so declare component takes two parameters. The first is just a human readable name, our component's name. And then the second is 
the URL that our components front end code is being served from. And we know that this is localhost 3001, which is uh, where our dev server is running. I hit save, nothing happens in, in the Streamlit uh, running app. We haven't, we haven't done anything other than make Streamlit aware of our component. So the return value of components.declareComponent is a function. And I'm going to save a reference to that function. And um, this function is how we uh, instantiate new um, instances of our component, of uh, our component's front end. And it's also how we send data to and receive values back from our component. So to create a new instance of the component, I can just use the, the function. And uh, over here in our running Streamlit app, we have an instance of the component appearing. It is missing some data because we haven't passed some of the data that it expects. Um, I can call my component again to make a second instance, but in fact, this causes an error. And to get around this error, we can use the magic key parameter and pass a unique string. We can do this a few more times to demonstrate that we can create as many instances of this component as, uh, as we want. And I will explain what the key component does later. Okay, so let's get back to just having a single instance of this component. Um, to send data to our component, we pass named parameters. So our component expects a single parameter called name, and I'm going to pass it, this parameter, and hit save. Uh, and we can see that uh, it is now saying hello streamlet. To see how this works, let's jump back over to WebStorm. Okay, so again, we're in the myComponent.tsx file inside the front end. And the render function is sort of where the magic happens. Um, arguments passed from Python are accessible inside this uh, dictionary called dis.props.args. So we can see here, um, this component uh, is expecting a single argument called name. And it's accessing that argument by passing a key to a dictionary. Uh, we could change this to expect a second argument called the greetings. And I'm gonna change this render code so that it's using our greeting and hit save. We can see no greeting argument was passed. And so uh, uh, on the Python side, so this doesn't look right yet. So I'm gonna jump back over and pass a greeting, hit save, and now everything is working as expected. Okay, so that is part of what's going on here. The second thing to explore is the return value, how, to, how we get data back from the front end to our components. So I'm gonna expand this a little bit. Um, our component function returns a value. We can assign that value to a variable and then we can print it out. And of course, it is helpful if we import Streamlit. Okay, so to start with, our component is returning none. It has no value. Let's see if I click this button. Ah, our component has a new value. It has a new value every single time I click this button. How does this work? Um, let's go back to front end land. And inside my component.render, there is this button, this click me button. And the click me button has uh, an on click handler that is defined down here. And I'm just gonna delete the contents of this on click handler and rewrite it. What on click does is it calls this function called streamlet.setComponentValue. And um, any value that we pass in streamlet.setComponentValue will be received as the return value from our um, Python component function. So if I were to pass a string, I'm a return, I am a return value and hit save. This is gonna get recompiled. Now, when I click the click me button, we can see indeed I am a return value gets passed. So I'm just gonna revert back to uh, what this originally looked like. So um, our component template has a bit of state. It, it remembers the number of times it's been clicked and in the click handler, it increments that internal num clicks counter and then sends the new value of num clicks back to Python. Okay, cool. 
And if we switch back over to Python, we can see again that we're just printing that value out, right? So it is worth taking a very brief diversion under the hood of Streamlit to understand how this magic is happening and demystify components. Like how is it that this, uh, that this variable's value is changing and getting reprinted over time. To do this, first I'm going to um, I'm going to kill my Streamlit server. Now I'm going to call which Streamlit, so that I can see the location that my Streamlit command lives at. And I am going to um, basically teach PyCharm how to run this app from a debug session. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a new creating a new debug configuration inside PyCharm. Uh, and I'm telling it to, to run streamlet run my component init.py and I'm making sure that when it calls streamlet run, it's, uh, it's executing the streamlet that's inside the virtual environment that we created. Make sure it's working directory is set properly. Okay, so now if I click the debug button here, let's make sure this is still working. Cool, so now we are uh, running the same Streamlit app, but instead of running it from a terminal, we're actually, we're running it from within a debug session inside inside PyCharm. Gonna modify this a bit to say a component tutorial, I'll give it a title. And down here, let's say return value. Next, I'm gonna kill this, I'm gonna close this page. I'm gonna set a breakpoint on our first Streamlit command. Restart the server. Uh, the, the Streamlit server has just started and um, we've stopped at this first breakpoint. I'm gonna advance over the breakpoint and we can see that at, when I advance over it, basically a command has been sent from Streamlit to the front end saying, draw a title you know, with this text in it, okay? I'm gonna step over the, the next line of code, which is the declaration, the declare component code. We can see that nothing has happened um, because all we've done is declare a component. But when I step over the next line, um, where we're actually instantiating the component, we can see that component appear. And finally, step over this final line of code, our return value is none. We end up sort of inside the guts of Streamlit, but that's not a problem. And now I'm gonna click this button. And lo and behold, we are back at our first breakpoint. So what happens is, okay, and let's just, let's keep stepping through. We have a new return value, we can see over here it's one. and we're printing that new return value out again. And every time I click this click me button, what's happening is that Streamlit is actually rerunning our entire script from top to bottom. And so it's not actually the case that uh, return value is getting modified every time we run the report, uh, the, the Streamlit app rather. What's actually happening is that we're uh, rerunning the script and there's a new return value. And that new return value that we're storing in a new variable is being printed out in a new call to st write. Cool, and it's worth noting that this is how Streamlit works with anything interactive. So if you have like a, a built-in slider on your page and you're sliding that slider back and forth, every time uh, you settle on a new value, your Streamlit front end is going to send a little packet of data back to the Streamlit server saying, hey, this is the new, the slider's new value. Streamlit is going to rerun your app from top to bottom. And when it gets to the line that uh, declares that slider, it's going to look up inside an internal table uh, for that slider's new value. Okay, so this is, this is essentially how Streamlit's execution model works and understanding it is really helpful to understanding how custom components work. There are a few issues with our component right now. Um, one is that we, we need to pass everything by name. It, it's a little unnatural to always have to call a function um, by naming its parameters. Um, another issue we have is that uh, the first time our component is created, it returns none rather than zero. So this return value is actually, here's a number of clicks. Um, and it doesn't really make sense to say that there is none number of clicks, right? Like the default value here should be zero. And then finally, we have this issue where if we create multiple instances of the same component with the same arguments, we get this duplicate widget ID error, right? Okay, so to fix these issues, we are going to uh, write a wrapper function. So it's worth noting that this is not, this uh, creating a wrapper function is not required to make a custom component, but it is a nice convention to follow and it can make your sort of the public facing API to your component that much nicer to use. I am going to start creating this. So I'm gonna define a new function called my component and it is going to take a name 
actually no, it's going to take a greeting and then it's going to take a name and I'm going to give this name a uh, default value of streamlet. And it's also going to take this magic key parameter, which I'm going to default to none. What this wrapper function can do is it can pre-process the arguments that it receives and then forwards along to, uh, to the front end. And then it can post-process the return values and it can specify um, a default value for the first time the component is instantiated. Uh, and it can also handle this key parameter. Okay, so all I'm going to do to begin with is, uh, is basically just pass on the greeting and name parameters, uh, but as named arguments to our component function. Return the value from here. I can then go ahead and delete these names and hit save. And again, nothing has changed because the wrapper function is now properly marshalling the, the parameters that we pass uh, by, by assigning them their expected names. If I remove um, streamlet, the same thing, uh, everything works still because we've assigned a default value to the name parameter. So basically, a wrapper function is just a way to make your component like much more Pythonic, right? Next, let's change this definition uh, and uh, specify a default value for our component. So if I hit save, now we can see, we haven't clicked our button yet, our click me button yet, but uh, number of clicks is now zero. And what this does is it, it tells Streamlit like if this component has not yet called streamlet.set component value on the front end, like we did here in the in the button click handler, then this is the value that the my component function should return, right? And so finally we have this key parameter. So let's again duplicate this code a couple times and see that we get these uh, duplicate widget ID errors, right? And so what this means is, um, let me change this to hello and this to bonjour. Uh, if we pass the exact same set of arguments to a component function, then Streamlet has no way to differentiate those internally. The key parameter lets us disambiguate for Streamlet uh, multiple instances of a component that may end up with the same set of parameters. So basically, if we pass different keys, to each of the, these. And we can change all of their arguments to, all of their greeting arguments to ahoy and hit save. Oh, and nothing works because I have neglected to actually pass this key argument on inside the wrapper function. And here we are. Um, now we have this, this complete working example where we can instantiate uh, multiple instances of the, uh, of the component that are all receiving the exact same set of parameters. They don't have to be, but they can be and everything is working just fine. Okay, that wraps up part one. And in part two, we'll be implementing an actually useful component in a very few lines of code, so stay tuned. And of course, if you're interested in jumping in immediately, check out the Streamlit documentation, which goes into more detail about all of this stuff. And also check out the Streamlit forums if you need help or want to show off your work.